Hey, welcome to Classic Car Garage, the original Classic Car Restoration how-to television show. Hey, thanks for joining us again this week. We decided to let Tom have the week off. He's back working on the body and paint work on our Project 56, and we've come down here to Anaheim, California to visit with our buddy Joe at Superior Automotive, who's going to be helping us with the engine rebuild. Joe's over right now checking out the state of the block. Now, when we get done with our motor, it's not going to quite look like this bad boy here, but it certainly is going to run a lot better than it has. Well, Joe's over right now checking out the block. Let's go see what he's up to. Well, Joe, here's the block out of our Project 56, the 265, and at first glance here, it doesn't look too bad. It's nice and clean. How'd you get it this way? We put it into an oven, and then from the oven, which will bake all the, the croid off it, mm -hmm. and from there, we'll go into an airless shot blaster. Okay, and it finally ends up like this. Now, once you get the block in this state, what's the next step in checking the health of it? The next step is to magnaflux all the critical parts, which would be the inside of Chevrolet, inside the lifter galley, uh -huh. the outside parts here on the water jackets, and the mains. And this one magged out pretty, pretty good, didn't it? It magged, magged out perfect. Yeah, it was a good, good block. Right. Well, this block didn't see a lot of severe use. This was an ambulance that was used in a small town, so apparently not a lot of people got sick out there, yeah. and the car <laughs> pretty much sat, and it was maintained relatively well. So after you've magnafluxed this, the next step is what? The next step is to check the dimensions on the block, okay? So we'll start with the uh, main saddles because the main saddles are the starting point of all the machining operations. Mm -hmm. Center of this main to the top of the block on both sides are critical. Okay, everything is taken off of that to square the block up as we call a square decking situation. Uh, from there, we check the cylinders and uh, we'll see what they look like. Okay, so we'll tilt it over here a little bit. You're gonna check out the bore of these cylinders with your micrometer there. Pretty accurate d device. Now, the most that we could go with one of these is about 60 over, right? 60,000, people have gone longer over that, but the 60,000 is, is accepted rule. The manufacturers make pistons in 20, 40, 20, 30, 40, and 60 thousandths, okay? But you can get a custom piston uh, up to 100 thousandths. But mm -hmm. in this case, depending if the man wanted to keep this thing as an original engine in the car, right. uh, it's still savable. Uh, preliminary checking show that it was 60 thousandths over. Okay. Okay, it's at the max right now. Well, let's check each of these four cylinders and see sure. what we've got, actually. Okay. This one's slightly over, 60 thousandths between three and five tenths over, which isn't bad. Nope. Okay, next cylinder, it's got an actual got a hole, hole in it, it somewhere. Looks like right there. Correct. Okay, and it starts coming back near the bottom of the cylinder. So being that that's got a hole in it, what would be the fix to that, sleeving it? You could sleeve this and bring that cylinder right back to standard. And putting a, a sleeve in there, which you would pound in there at a step at the bottom is gonna bring that back. That's what sleeving is all about. Correct. The most so on the wear is going to be at the top where the piston rocks. Mm -hmm. As the bottom, you get to the bottom of the skirt, it uh, holds the integrity. So you can see the difference here from the top right? Okay, to the bottom. To the bottom there. So it looks like we've got a candidate for two sleeves here. The other two seem to be okay. That is, if we wanted to stay with this original block. But a lot of these tri-fives didn't have uh, casting numbers on them. So we can actually replace this block with an exact duplicate or one from a, a similar car and be okay, right? Correct. All right, well, Joe, it's looking pretty good. We're going to continue to check the health of our motor. When we come back here on Classic Car Garage, Jim Richardson's going to be here with his Eastwood Resto tip. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Let's talk about the uh, crankshaft here. Now, this is a, a uh, polished crankshaft. You actually send your cranks out to be turned, right? Correct. And w w what happens when a crankshaft is turned? What exactly happens to it? We take a standard crankshaft and we'll have a cut 10-10 uh, on the split. Being on the split means that you have a high dimension and a low dimension. We go right in the center of that dimension. That'll give me what I need in this shop. would be 2.2 to 2.4 thousandths clearance, bearing clearance. Mm -hmm. Then once it comes back to you, you polish it, but you also add your own element to it here too. Tell, tell us about these holes. Right, what we do here, when you get it back from most crank grinders, it'll be just cut, because that's a production shop. Okay, you'll have a very sharp edge around the oil delivery hole. What we do is we chamfer and radius the oil hole and polish the whole journal out. What that does is enhance the, and give directional flow to all of the uh, bearings. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that, that is a performance option, right? This is something that you normally wouldn't get. Absolutely, yes. And it just it helps to increase the oil flow in here to these bearings. That's exactly right. All right. And of course, you balance this crankshaft too, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. Right. But before we do that, you've got some pistons back here. This is an original from our, our project car too. It doesn't really look too bad. It's not. It's a uh, Chevrolet steel rod 
It's just about the same steel they're using today. Matter of fact, might be a little better. It's a stronger rod. It's an I-beam rod mm -hmm. configuration. Okay, it has a 5.7 center to center distance. Okay? Right. And, but it uses a smaller bolt, 11 32nd type bolt, okay? When we finish with it, it will look like this, okay? Same 5.7 dimension, right. okay? It'll be magged, magnafluxed, shot peened, okay? It'll have ARP 109,000 PSI bolts in it. Okay? okay, so better bolts is what we've got here. Better bolts for the strength, and also we'll have this hole on size. All right. Very important. Great. Well, our project car's engine looks like it's going to be shaping up quite nicely. Come Got on. to add a little horsepower to it, too, I understand. Yes. When we come back here on Classic Car Garage, we're going to continue with Joe from Superior Automotive, talking engines. Stay with us. Welcome back to Classic Car Garage. We're talking about engines here with Joe of Superior Automotive in Anaheim, California. And he's working on our project 56 Chevy Sedan Deliveries 265 cubic inch engine. Now, uh, Joe, we've heard about balancing and blueprinting. Let's talk a little bit about balancing. That has to do with the weight of each of the pistons and also the rods, right? Correct. Now, these are brand new pistons. They come out of the box like this, but of course they all don't weigh the same to begin with, right? That's right. How do we go about determining uh, uh, how much these pistons weigh and getting them all to weigh the same? Okay. We take the, we weigh all the pistons, all eight pistons of weight, mm -hmm. and we take the lightest guy in the whole bunch, right. and we'll match that weight to within a tenth of a gram. We have a gram scale here, laid on the scale like this, number will come up, and that's what we have to make each one to. If that had been the lightest one, 552.1, each piston subsequently would be 552.1. Right, now you need to take weight off all the other pistons in order to get them to 552.1. Where are you going to take the weight off on a piston like this? Okay, some pistons have on the uh, pin boss, they have a balance pad, which is in this area right here. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, it doesn't because it's a very uh, lightweight cast piston, right. forged piston, I'm sorry. We'll take it off from the pin itself. Okay. okay? Inside the wrist pin, We'll take a little bit of chamfer here, a little bit of a chamfer over here. Okay, that gives us our weight uh, off. So you'll shave all this off there. And the whole idea be behind having a balanced engine is, is what? Well, you want to get everything, all the components to match each other, okay? Because when you're spinning the reciprocating and rotary motion inside the motor, mm -hmm. you have to make sure that everything has been uh, to factory specs minus whatever you're going to take off for your, uh, your, your lightweight piston. In other words, this piston originally from the factory uh, weighed, let's say, 500 grams, okay? Mm -hmm. It now weighs 400 grams. There's a big difference. The counterweight on the crankshaft, though, is made at 500 grams. So if you go to put this piston in, the, the weight that's, that's revolving mm -hmm. uh, rotary will actually shake the motor. Right, okay? and, and the whole idea behind a balanced motor is just so that it runs smoothly, everything is balanced, it's gonna last a lot longer, run a lot smoother, right? Yes. A lot well, less wear and tear. Yeah. What it'll do, it'll save the bearing life. The bearing life of the, of the motor will be enhanced tremendously. Mm -hmm. uh, the RPM range can be extended. That's why on race pistons, they make them lightweight, okay? But then you have to compensate for that weight on the crank, and you'll get a higher RPM with no problem. Now, the pistons are just one of the things that you weigh here in balance, right? The rods are the other. Correct. Okay, so once again, same principle. You're gonna find your lightest rod, and you're gonna go and uh, uh, make that, you're gonna basically adjust all the other rods to the lightest one. Now this one here weighs, it looks like 648.9 grams. So if this were your uh, uh, lightest rod, if this were your lightest rod, this is what you would want to go to. But if this were one of your heavier ones, where would you take that weight off? Okay, well, there's a couple of exceptions here. First of all, when we do a rod, we do a total weight, but we also, as you can see on this end here, we do what they call the small end, reciprocating end. Uh -huh. This is the part that goes up and down, it right. does not rotate, okay? Right. We weigh all this, it's hung on a fixture similar to this. Put this over here. We hang the, ho the heavy end over here, and we weigh just the light end I on see. all eight rods. Once we have this end down to within a tenth of a gram, it's removed, and the total weight is checked. Okay, because we have two ways of doing it. We have reciprocating and rotary. Right. Now, the question was, where does it come from? Well, right. On the reciprocating end, we take it right from the, around the head of the, uh, of the pin boss, mm -hmm. right in that area. And on the other end, the rotary end, you can see where we've taken it right from here, right. from the bottom. So now that we've got our pistons and our rods all weighed, they're all the same, next step is balancing the uh, crankshaft, right? Well, the next step is to make up a bob weight, which are these guys here, mm -hmm. that uh, actuate a uh, portion of the reciprocating and rotary motion inside the motor, okay? Right. That's real important because this is a pr proportion, 50% of what we're gonna pick up. 
This is your card. This is going to show you the reciprocating rotary motion of the engine. Okay, we'll add that up and divide it by two. Of course, we're running two bob weights. Hundred and uh, rather seventeen hundred and twenty point two grams divided by two, eight hundred and sixty point one for each side of this, right? Correct. These are then bolted onto the crankshaft, and the crankshaft is spun up, and any corrections that have to be made will be shown on the on the scale over here. Okay, let's take these bob weights over there. Show us exactly how that works. Here's our crankshaft and our uh, balancer here. Let me set one of these up for you. It's a little tricky to come on sometimes, but let's get him. So you're going to do this to each of these all the way down the row here. Yes, each individual rod journal mm -hmm. will get one of these on here. Like that. And then once these are all set up on here, all across the uh, uh, line here, then you're going to spin this up. And uh, if everything is within balance, you're going to be able to tell it right away, right? Correct. Right. Well, Joe, today's uh, modern engines, when I say modern, I'm talking about, you know, modern day engines are really quite complex things. And our Project 56 Chevy's engine is going to be uh, cranking out a little more horsepower than we originally thought, mm -hmm. right? How are you going to accomplish that? What we're going to do is, depending on the camshaft, so on the head work you want us to do, and mm -hmm. so on. Uh, any accessories like an intake manifold, mm -hmm. depends on how stock he wants to keep it. If he wants to stay, you know, pure stock, stay with the, the mm -hmm. original carburetor manifold, mm -hmm. you can rework the carburetor, but uh, the cylinder heads can do a lot of uh, a lot of porting underneath the valves. What sort of horsepower do you think we're going to end up with with his, with his car's oh, motor? That's hard to say. We have to plan that out. <laughs> okay. we'll sit down and talk about it. That's it. Very smart answer. Okay. Thank you very much, Joe, for telling us more Welcome. about what you do here at okay. Superior Automotive. Very Definitely sure. superior work. When we come back here on Classic Car Garage, we've got the new product segment. Stay with us. In this week's Viewer's Garage is this 32 Ford Hot Rod Cabriolet, owned by Mike Swain of Lebanon, Ohio. It's got a 303 cubic inch Olds engine, a four-speed hydromatic transmission, 47 Ford juice brakes with scoops, and those Edmunds Jones headlights. Hey Mike, nice ride and thanks for the pictures. Got a car you think should be on TV? Just send us your pictures right here to Classic Car Garage. Hey, welcome back to Classic Car Garage. Before we go today, we've got a couple of new products we want to show you. Take a look at this. This would look great on any car nuts wall. It's a print from Hugo Prado at Air Arts in Chicago, Illinois, and it's a beautiful red and white 1960 Corvette. Hugo uh, specializes pretty much in Chevrolets and particularly Corvettes. He's got images of uh, everything from 57s up to 97s. He's even got a 67 Camaro SS and a 31 Duesenberg that he's just come out with. And he is available for commissions if you want your own private piece of artwork done of your special automobile. Again, it's Air Arts Hugo Prado in Chicago, Illinois. Now, uh, a print like this unframed is going to go for about $40. It's $160 framed and signed. And again, look great on your wall. Take a look at this. This is something I'm really excited about because it's from a friend of ours. Jim Richardson of our Eastwood Resto Tip has just come out with his fourth book on engine and chassis detailing, show quality engine and chassis preparation techniques. Deals a little bit with the engine in terms of what color that things should be, but primarily focuses on the chassis, everything from front to back from the uh, front suspension and steering gear, a little bit on transmissions, brakes, you name it, it's all in here. And what's great about it is that it's filled with illustrations and also pictures, very simple, easy to understand. It'll help you restore your chassis and your engine to like new condition. Retails for about $16.95 from our friends at CarTech up in Minnesota, or of course you can buy this at most online booksellers or your favorite bookstore. Well, it's just about all the time we've got for you on today's Classic Car Garage. We hope you've learned a little about engine rebuilding from Joe there at Superior Automotive. Now, when you go out to rebuild your engine or have it rebuilt, be sure to ask a lot of questions and look for a shop that's clean, neat, and organized because that's going to give you some tip as to the quality and integrity that they put into their work. Till next week, for Tom and Jim, I'm Jeff Shade. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week right here on Classic Car Garage.